Hey guys, so the other week I got the most amazing opportunity in the world. Don't ask me how I got it. Um, but I got to play The Witcher 3 um, at a press event. I went to an office, there was lots of stands set up. Uh, they had the devs here. We could play on both Xbox One and PS4. I did get to play on Xbox One, uh, just because I got there slightly late. Uh, so I just wanted to get into my impressions of what I actually thought of the game. Before this though, I know it is one of the most anticipated games of this year. So if you're excited for it, or if you have any opinions on it, or you want to know anything about it, because I did play it, uh, leave it in the comments below and I'll come chat to you guys about it after this actually uploads. I did get to play the game for around about three hours, and I did talk to the devs, uh, but I did record some interviews actually, but for the life of me I can't get the footage out properly so that won't be coming out. Um, but I can give you my initial, like, brain impressions. First things first, I'm the realist, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, first thing I picked up from the game is how captivating the actual world is. Now, being a mainly console player, like I mainly play on PlayStation consoles, this is the first time The Witcher has actually come uh, to my console of choice. I haven't actually played the other games. I played The Witcher 2 a little bit. I do own it on PC, um, but not enough to actually make a proper judgment of it. But just playing it for that couple of hours, how... It's really hard to explain, and I think this is the reason why it has, this game has like shot to the top of my most anticipated list. The reason why I can't actually stop thinking about this game, which is rare, is that you feel like you're really in the environment and everything surrounding you is supposed to be there. It's perfectly created to be in that space. I actually love the world sort of in itself where it's not some fairy tale like black or white, you're good or you're evil, you know, like infamous where it's like either you can mass murder a bunch of people or you can give more flowers sort of thing. It's very morally ambiguous, which is what I like in game, it's sort of more Game of Thrones-ish. And I'm really happy that like it did captivate me that much and I only played it for a couple of hours. Like usually with RPGs you have to play them for 10, 20 hours before you're like really sucked into it. This one like hits you like that and I cannot wait to continue playing it later. Number two is how well the game was actually designed uh, from a sort of more, not really technical, but sort of a tutorial-ish basis. Um, I heard a lot of complaints about The Witcher 2 that it kind of had a steep learning curve, like you just hit a wall and you're like, oh fuck. Um, sort of similar to how Dark Souls approached it. I'm happy to say that the tutorials in it, you know, taught you how to play properly. Um, I went into the wild afterwards and didn't find anything too difficult. <laughs> the dude next to me though, he died like from the wolves four times. Maybe he wasn't paying attention, maybe he just never played like Dark Souls or anything that had slightly harder combat before, but I was like, ah, sucker. <laughs> and I also like the design from a standpoint of comparing it to Dragon Age Inquisition, which was one of the biggest games, if not the biggest game that came out last year. How when you get into this game, like you have all these party members, you have all your equipment that you have to manage, you have to manage your leveling and what skills you're gonna pick, and that all hits you like a ton of bricks like in a second when you start that game. Uh, this one, it's not as complex in terms of, oh fuck, like I need to spend like a billion hours in these menus trying to configure everything to work everything out. It's sort of a bit more streamlined, but at the same time it's not. It's just easier to navigate and work your way through it. So I'm really happy that they designed it that way, so good on you. This sort of also fits in this category. The game was actually delayed. It was supposed to come out around now, uh, but they did delay it for a couple of months. The game played, in my opinion, really well. I was talking to the devs and they were like, we could have released it now. They just wanted to put that tiny bit extra polish on it so you didn't have to deal with um, some game breaking bullshit uh, when you jump into it. So I am like 100% supportive of them delaying it. And number three is just how beautiful The Witcher 3 actually is. Um, from both the death standpoints of the actual graphical fidelity, all the environments just look superb. It's one of the best looking games I've seen on a console. And that's saying a lot for a game which has as big of a map as this. Um, usually games that are a lot more polished graphically are like linear type games. This is like massive open world, so they've made everything look good. And the other standpoint I wanted to take this from, from how beautiful it is, is how well they've designed the environments. Like, 
I was on a mission and I went to this like decrepit castle. Um, it looked like it was half broken down and there was rooms that were, you know, half open. Um, and it was on this beautiful, just like grassland backdrop and then you see this massive like falling apart castle. It was just really pretty. All the like villages and everything like that looked like they were designed just like they put so much detail into every single tiny section and again this is a massive map and like I was running around it and it all like had detail everywhere and that is why The Witcher 3 is one of my most anticipated games this year. I really like I was excited for it and it was on my list but playing it just shot it pretty much to the top of just how well everything worked and I can't wait to actually get a Witcher game on a PlayStation console and something that I can sit down and sink like hundreds of hours if I get time um, into a game just as in depth as this. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe. I make content semi regularly. If you want to talk to me some more, make sure you follow me on Twitter. It is at MX Games. Links are all in the description below. Uh, chat to me about video games, leave me a comment, I'd love to come talk to you guys about it, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!